This is Adjuster TV. Adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. <clears throat> okay, how does component pay work, really? So component pay is basically when people say uh, fee schedule, this is component pay. There's components, right? There's pieces that you can kind of piece together and it all depends on what, what happened at the house, how much you're paying, what you did at the house, so on and so forth. Um, that will dictate kind of the way you get paid personally. And I think that it, I speak for probably most experienced adjusters, unless they're doing a lot of daily work, uh, where it may or may not make sense to do it this way. Component pay is kind of the gold standard, right, of, a, of independent adjuster claims. If you are doing um, claims like photo and scope claims where you just use your like an app on your phone and you just show up at the house and you, you follow the app and just take pictures and you know put things into the app based on what it says to do next, um, you're probably gonna get like a flat rate for that. You might get an hourly for that. You might get a day rate for that. Uh, it just depends on what the, the, what the particulars are of the deployment are, right? It might be just some local little thing like, hey, we need to go look at cars, we need to go look at this house or whatever, and just get photos. Um, probably not gonna get component pay. There are still plenty of component pay opportunities out there for adjusters, and I think that the IA firms um, and adjusters also prefer to do component pay or fee schedule because that's where um, we're getting paid uh, for our work Right, and we're incentivized to be more efficient with component pay. And what I mean by that is, is that the claim pays what it pays, right? So wh whether it's a section of fence blown down or it's the house is gone, right? Those are th th a small claim should theoretically take not a whole lot of time. Like a section of fence blown down, you can come out, and get a couple measurements, get a few photos, ask a few questions, maybe do a quick peek around the house and then you're gone, right? You're not gonna get paid as much for that. You're still gonna get pa probably paid more for that than you would doing photo and scope only. But if you write an estimate for, this, for the, the fence and you explain the policy to the homeowner and you explain the settlement and the de deductible and this kind of stuff, then you should probably get paid more, right? And even for a base claim like that, you're probably gonna get paid more than if you do photo and scope, generally speaking, right? Um, whereas if you have a lot of damage at the house. You could still probably, like if you have hail damage, let's say the roof, gutters and downspouts, three windows on the right side, uh, well, three window wraps and screens on the right side, and then there's some vinyl siding on the right side of the house that needs to be replaced. And then there's maybe like, you need to pressure wash and restain the deck, and then you've got a grill cover, right? And this is kind of a standard issue um, hail claim in the Midwest, right? Depending on the size of the house, if the roof is steep or not, right? If it's two stories or not, uh, if there's any outbuildings or not, um, that could be a pretty good sized claim, right? It could be $9,000. It might be $39,000 um, pretty easily. But the great thing about component pay is, is that, you know, if you if you pull up and you and you see this, this is a, you know, it's a 2,500 square foot house or a 3,000 square foot house, and it's got a 40 square roof on it, and it's steep, right, which will add, you know, that's, that's a component, right? You get, you, if you're gonna climb on that roof, then you get to bill for climbing on a steep roof. You have to show with your pitch gauge and everything, right? Um, then that's gonna be a, a pretty, you know, a, a pretty good payday for you as, a, as getting paid fee schedule or getting paid a component. If it's $25,000 claim or whatever it is, right? If it's, if it's significant, you're gonna get basically what amounts to a commission on that total of that, of whatever you write, right? Um, this does two things for you, right? And it incentivizes you, like I said a minute ago, to be more efficient, to, to take less time to scope that loss because it's gonna pay exactly the same whether it takes you six hours to do it or it takes you an hour and 15 minutes to do it, right? You kinda wanna take less time to do it, but you wanna be as thorough as possible, right? So there's an incentive there to find as much damage as possible so that you're not uh, 
leaving money on the table for yourself, but also taking money off the table for the homeowner that has to be dealt with later when a contractor comes around eventually where they figure it out, well, there's holes in this awning on the back side of the house and it's a 25 foot long canvas awning. Um, it's, not on, it's not on the estimate. The adjuster didn't see it or the adjuster didn't pay us for it, right? You, as the adjuster, you're leaving money on the table for that. Um, component pay is the way to go. And there's a lot to say about it, and I've got a number of videos about it. But suffice it to say, you're incentivized to be faster and more efficient, but also to find as much damage as possible. And ideally, you want to be doing fee schedule and component pay as a field adjuster. If you want to watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad-free, as well as get access to a members-only segment question and answer, head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.